Welcome to Confirmation Bias, presented by the League Ambassadors. I'm Ambassador Kenny Ken Ken, and golf, they've got the same problems as baseball, basketball, and football. That's my confirmation bias. <laughs> I'm Ambassador Junior Blue, and golf was boring been before me. Tiger, <laughs> and it's back to being boring, and that's... My confirmation bias. Oh, this is going to be fun. I'm Ambassador Dad. And as long as they turn their nose up at chicken and watermelon being the, on the menu at the master's dinner, you can count me out. And that's my confirmation bias. Man, how you not going to like watermelon? Yo, the first time I went to, a, uh, to see somebody play golf, I saw a man screaming at no one, broke his, his golf club on the ground and walked away. Anything that that's cra- that drives somebody that crazy ain't for me. And that's my confirmation bias. And I'm Ambassador Chef Curry. I haven't watched a full golf event since Tiger competed in the 2013 Masters. But the problem isn't you, golf. It's me. And that's my confirmation bias. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Welcome to Confirmation (laughs) Bias, hosted by the League Ambassadors. Uh, As a reminder, you can follow us everywhere on social media. Our handles are at the League AM. Uh, Please also visit our website, theleagueam.com. Visit our YouTube channel, The League Ambassadors. Uh, On today's show, we are attempting to go for a Guinness Book of World Records as being the most, having the most. African American males to discuss the widest sport ever for the longest amount of time. In one room. In one room. We're going to go for golf, part two. Uh, <laughs> seriously, um, episode nine uh, in our episode titled Arnold Palmer and Half and Half, we had a preliminary discussion about golf. If you've been following us all season, you know that on Thursdays we attempt to cover non-mainstream sports. We want to pick up that conversation and put a kind of put a wrap on this uh, by continuing a discussion, um, but then also talk about some hot topics within golf. So with that, let's get started with the recently completed U.S. Open. Well, yes, Devin. Well, before you do that, I I, <laughs> I, I cannot believe Omar's confirmation bias. Um, you <laughs> know, it's bullshit, right? It's bullshit. <laughs> it's absolute bullshit. She went to go see. Someone play golf? No, no. The well, first time, I'm sorry. The first time I ever went to a golf course, I saw a man. You know, he was mad. He whatever he did, wherever he hit the ball, he was screaming at himself because nobody else was around. He broke his golf club. Okay. And you said that you could never see yourself being that mad because I have no, no, no. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, that's, that's what I that's, call bullshit. The sport on. is not for me because I have anger issues. <laughs> and I should not be playing. That, that's not sport. how it came out. Omar, that much time. is any sport for you, though? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Domino. <laughs> Ch- check out our turkey bowl from 2016. <laughs> so, uh, on that note, let's start with our first hot topic, which is the U.S. Open Tournament, which which was just concluded, uh, as we talked about on our show on Tuesday. Kevin, help me out with his name. Brooks what? <laughs> Kopka. Kopka. Brooks Kopka won the U.S. Open Tournament. But what we want to talk about, uh, and I want to throw it to you guys, is there was some bitch-assness happening regarding the U.S. Open Tournament. And First, they were, they were every called year, bitch though. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they were called bitch-asses. Uh, before the tournament starts, so typically in golf, right, the players will get to wherever the tournament, the, ma- the tournament is being held, especially when it's a major, a few days prior to. And they were complaining about the rough and the grass and saying they need to cut it. Um, and typically, for those of you that don't know, the U.S. Open is supposed to be, of the four golf majors, the most difficult 
uh, competitive course. Um, and so a couple of players were complaining, and then Jason Day and Rory McElroy basically said, Say that again? Jason Day no, and Rory McElroy. Okay. McElroy. Mm. McElroy. <laughs> That's not what you were going for. <laughs> <laughs> We'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Woo! They, uh, they basically told the players to stop bitching and complaining. The USGA, though. He, nah, he, he went past stop bitching and complaining. Well, you know. <laughs> y'all don't need to be here then. The USGA, they, they cut the rough. And then as a result. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny. Yeah. As a result of that. Thanks, Kevin. They cut the rough. They cut the grass. And then we saw crazy scores. We had Justin mm-hmm. Thomas sh- set record a major scores. record yep. uh, for the shooting the lowest round in a major. He shot a, a 963 on Saturday of the tournament. Um, and then the, the winner, Kevin, his name is Brooks what? Kopka. Brooks Kopka shot uh, 16 under for the tournament, which tied uh, McElroy's record <laughs> from 2011 in the U.S. Open. And so... First question for you guys is, one, which type of golf do you want to see? Do you want to see, well, assuming you want to watch golf, <laughs> do you want to see easy scores? Or do you want to see it be sort of a, a, a more competitive experience in, 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 in the major tournament? I want to well, see. I'll, I'll hop on. Oh, go ahead, Les. I want to see it as hard as possible because to watch us play, I could play a, I could play, I could play a course like Westchester course. <laughs> you want to feel closer? Yeah, like, you yeah. could do that? Like, <laughs> I, look, I look at a course that's easy, and I'm like, huh, I can hit the ball in that rough. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so I want to see it as competitive as possible. Well, does I mean, com- competitive mean that it's more difficult? Competitive means that the field is competitive, though, right? No, but if you look at it like this, if you have an, an easier course, the longer hitters are going to push the ball further and have shorter they're going to have shorter onto the green. Mm -hmm. So if you're not that, if you're more precise with where you're hitting the ball, Mm -hmm. it's more competitive that way if you have more rough, more uh, sand traps, if you have water to go over. So that's kind of what makes it more competitive. It's not just about how far you can hit the ball. Kev? Yeah, I I agree with Les. I'll you know I'll jump on the wagon of the the avid golf fans and say that you know you want to see if that's the course that's designated to be the most difficult. You want to see the best players in the game go up against it and see how they fare. I'm, like to your point, Kenyon, it was supposed to be like the the Mike Tyson punch out of golf course. <laughs> First of all, you, any, su- go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say you, you're supposed to struggle on it. So you know, for for I think uh, even par is considered to be right. a good score right. at uh, at the U.S. Open. So for 15 of the 16 top players to to break par, and obviously, yeah, if this is something you follow for a while, you're really into, you expect to see. Uh, players struggle with it and they don't I can see why they complain first of all people complaining like they made it a mud run or something like this game is not physical would you stop Kevin <laughs> <laughs> sorry Kevin is in Baltimore and he's having his nightcap because it's late <laughs> we excuse you Kevin with, with a lot of ice with a lot, with of, a lot ice. of ice we gonna bite <laughs> Put that shit on mute. Go, Omar. I'm done. <laughs> shit. Uh, your point was it was a mud run. Eh, whatever. <laughs> Devin. Um, I mean, my thing is this. I, I think it should be competitive, right? But I think when you're talking about the person who's in charge of running or creating the course, mm-hmm. which often comes up with the U.S. Open, yes, it's almost like when in boxing like we talked about earlier this week the ref is too too much involved mm-hmm. so when that person has to come out and defend their strategy or their of the what way happened yeah. of where they how they design the course mm-hmm. i think that's a problem for golf because it's already a fringe sport it's already an, an elitist sport mm-hmm. so when you when you start with that with our biggest major because you know it's a it's a global sport it was you know we went over it months ago it's right. from scotland right when it's here it should be clean so you can get more people to watch it. But when that's one of the biggest issues and people are arguing about that, I think that's the problem. Now, I would say that... I don't think that's the problem of viewership, though. (laughs) No, but it doesn't help. (laughs) I I would say that McElroy is probably, right now, um, amongst active golfers, probably the most popular golfer. uh, And and Jay Day, or Jason Day, is right under him. How do you guys feel about the, like, two of the top players basically telling everyone else... Quit bitching. Yeah. That's who's supposed to be doing it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs)
It can't. It can't be Jim Jim Bumfuck from uh, rank six hundredth in the world saying it. It has to. It has to come from strength. Just like we talked about in our social studies uh, segment or our show, someone that has a platform has to be the one that's out. It in front. means more. It means more. It holds more weight. Okay. Next topic. Uh, and this was the reason, part of the reason for my confirmation bias, which I don't know why it was funny, but I just thought it was interesting. Uh, they're doing. <laughs> Well, when no, I, go ahead, go ahead, go I think ahead, got the ahead. same process as baseball, ba- uh, problems as baseball, basketball, and football. They're testing for uh, PEDs. Oh, I thought you were going to say golf. that golfers also beat the shit out of their wives. <laughs> <laughs> he <Yes>. got <laughs> um, <laughs> My bad. Next year, they're doing. They're incorporating blood testing mm-hmm. uh, to and spit, and they're coming right out and saying because we want to look for human growth hormones uh-huh. to tying it back to the U.S. Open. Even and with the especially the guy Brooks, Kevin, Kopka, Brooks Kopka, <laughs> uh, is one of the longer drivers in 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 the PGA Association, and a lot of guys are really starting to beat the hell out of the ball, and so they want to make sure that their game is clean. Is that a is that a is that a positive for the sport, and should other sports be taking notice? You no, know, it's stupid. I don't even know why they're <laughs> testing it. Really? Yeah. Do you care about that, Omar, as no, a sports fan? No, not at all. I mean, it's... Um, <laughs> Regardless of the sport? They all doing it anyway. No, but I'm saying... Do you, <laughs> the question is, do you care regardless of the sport? No, I don't. Really? Yeah, Because everybody doesn't do it, so someone can have a Man, an advantage. That's the outlier, people who don't do it. <laughs> Kev? Maybe golf should take a book out of baseball's success story and just let guys juice, <laughs> let the sport get amped up, get popularity, and then hope that the downfall doesn't kill them. But, and, but no, in all seriousness, I, I think it's you know I think it's important. You just you got to toe the line, and I think they're gonna go with the, uh, the I think the the anti doping like the world regulation, right. water, like a yeah. standard water. that they all have to. Yeah. To now, if that's the regula- regulations, then fine, test. Yeah, I just don't think there should be regulations. Regulations, that's all. Well, I think it, it stems back from when uh, Tiger or Eldrick, <laughs> however he, go, he goes by now. Eldrick, right. <laughs> yeah. <now. laughs> um, when he came into the game and he changed the look of a golfer or, or you know, looking like uh, a free safety as opposed to just an old fat white guy. No uh, more pot bellies. Working out and, you know, his Canadian. Or, ra- or even a rail thin. Shut up, Devin. <laughs> I had to say it. But, like, since then. You know, we forgot about the Canadian doctors. We, we, everyone did, didn't <laughs> <we>? <laughs> and he's been struggling ever, ever since. since. <laughs> um, but with that, uh, he's getting help though. <laughs> We're not there. We're yet. not there yet. <laughs> We're, not We're not there, there yet. yet. We're not there yet, B. <laughs> but with that, I think people started thinking about working out and taking their physical game to another level, which can bring in those other elements. Because, like you said, uh, I don't know if it was off off the show or on the show. But that average drive has gone way up for everyone. Right. So everyone's hitting the longer off the tee. Mm -hmm. So if before no one was and now everyone is, you might have to take a look at that. Granted, if everyone's doing it, so be it. I mean, everyone does it in in cycling. Omar, (laughs) I think think before I I kick it to Les on this, the the thing that golf is, is one of those sports where finesse and shot making is important. And I think if 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 every let's to your point, if everyone is hitting it long off the tee, then those guys that their game is predicated on finesse and skill and 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 choosing the right clubs, I think it is a disadvantage for them. And it I think takes away from the overall attraction or, or aesthetic of the sport. Would you agree with that, Les? I agree with it. I mean, since they're going with the anti-doping laws or rules. Um, it should knock out all of the HGH unless they're cycling on and off, like we know. <laughs> so well, baseball players we will do. See, it will be obvious, and it will, we and will see. bring it out, and you'll see the um, the drives distance fall back to where they were five, ten years ago. And um, I mean, I'm with it. I'm all for it. Kev, clean it yeah. up. Well, along with HGH, like Les said, they're also testing for uh, recreational use. Um, <laughs> I think it'll be interesting to see whoever the first person is that, that gets popped. But um, another thing that I read I thought was interesting, that previously, if a player failed a drug test, that the penalties were not unannounced to, like, the tour and to right. everybody else. And, and now that they will be. And I'm kind of wondering why was that the case before? Was it just to keep it on a, a hush-hush? Or uh, It's a country club. It's privilege. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which 
actually kind of not necessarily completely, but it kind of ties into the next comment I wanted to make. So I found it interesting that one of the golfers said it's contradictory to the ethics of our game. What is mm. testing, testing, which I found amazing. Wow, that is amazing. <laughs> because the ethics of their game is predicated off of exclusion, not inclusion, well, where you can only have. That's not what he's talking where about. You can though. only have certain races and certain sexes. He, what he's talking play about the game. What he's, <laughs> you're right, but he's talking about the 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 being a gentleman and trusting that you do the right thing. Oh, is being a gentleman <laughs> excluding I'm, I'm just telling you races what he's and gender? About. I'm just telling you what he's I'm talking just, about. You put I, his hands on his hips. I did. You can be I a very to. good racist and be a gentleman. Can you? <laughs> yes. Because you got on a suit? <laughs> <laughs> depends on who you being a gentleman to. So we mentioned uh, Tiger earlier, and uh, he's also a hot topic again in golf. Hot mm. mess. Because... <laughs> Because he he tweeted out, uh, hmm. tweaked out. He, he, oh, he tweeted. tweeted. <laughs> <laughs> you silly, Omar. <laughs> he tweeted out that he is seeking uh, professional help uh, so that he can better deal with uh, some of his pain medication um, and sleeping pills. And I just have one simple question, and and I'm I'm not being funny when I ask this, but is this is this it for Tiger? Is this it? Is this? It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's, it's uh, so sad because you know when Tiger was a young prodigy, and he was behind people who were in front of him hitting, and his these large crowds used to mob deep with him to the 18th hole. You know, you would. It was something to see, <laughs> to see where he's at now. I see what you did there. Thank you, sir. I see what you did there, sir. He was, to trying, see... to get, he was trying to get in the clip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good shit. Yes, I will. We can, we can, <laughs> can re-edit that. <laughs> um, but to see how far he's fallen is really sad because of what the, the comet he was shooting across the sky. He was such a big person, not personality, star Yeah. for that sport. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Do we all have him for the Biggie Smalls? Uh, I believe so. Much, yeah. yeah. I mean, so yes, it is all <laughs> because... <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Biggie stopped making records. Like <laughs> I think I'm not, I'm not giving up on Tiger. I think he got one left hit, one hit left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he got a hit, all right. And so my, my my thing about Tiger, though, I think I think we have to address the biggest issue here, and, and um, he definitely has an addictive personality, right? No, so, oh, no, no, no. I, no, I think that if if you look at how he approaches everything, um, I think he was addicted. To, to golf mm -hmm. so he, he fully focused on that and dove into that and was great addicted at it to training and all that good stuff you're addicted right training. Yeah. I think he was also addicted to the American treasure <laughs> <laughs> I need you to keep going right now I need you to go fast please keep going Devin shout out to Raina <laughs> uh, whatever do you <laughs> no see keep going Keep going, and and now and now this, yeah. I, mean, I, I think if you just look at the progression, and I, see, I, Devin, I joke you a had, bit. you made a great point, and then <laughs> you no, but stay too long. No, it's it's, it's a great point. He wasn't wrong. I'm, I don't think I am. <laughs> I mean, the you, question you have, is, what's next? Oh Ooh, man, God. yeah. Mm. We are, we maybe gets addicted it. to the get back. Mm, okay. We just saw it. We're He's go going through what's next. <laughs> right Addicted to getting well, better. Sober Ooh. living. Kevin, please well, say that, And his, ad his addiction to, to, to winning and then that idea of perfection. Like we had this idea that he's this perfect human being, his perfect father. And when you lose that, you either can't get back up or you spend your whole life trying to, to, to you know, put the pieces back together. So when it all, I don't know. When it all started to unravel for him, that... Uh, that was my silent fear. I was like, yo, like he's, this is someone that's so fixated on creating the right image and the perfect image and that it just, he wouldn't be able to, it's like once it's it became undone, it, it was too hard to keep it up. There's only been one perfect human so uh, that they say. That's <laughs> Jesus. I was going to say Bruce Wayne, but. <laughs> <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally, <laughs> let's, <laughs> final, final hot topic. Um, and then I, this is pretty big, uh, you know, because if, if Tiger over the last 20 years has been the man in golf, I think uh, the Scottie Pippen 
would be Mr. Phil Mickelson. And uh, it was reported last week that he split with his longtime caddy, uh, Bones Mackey. Uh, they were together 25 years. Um, Phil actually didn't even participate in the U.S. Open uh, tournament because he is very rich, number one. <laughs> and number two, uh, his daughter was graduating from college. college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he didn't want to miss the graduation. so he. But he did go out and scout the uh the course in bones case, did yeah in case there was a delay right he could you know the tournament would start right know, thursday as opposed to i mean friday as opposed to thursday so is this is this well, bones did his job so he can keep get that check yeah <laughs> one last <laughs> check <laughs> is this is this significant for phil's career do we and, I, and i'll go to you les uh because i think out of all of us you probably have the most experience with Ooh, golfing that sucks um <laughs> <laughs> loosely <laughs> loosely <laughs> Uh, is this going to be significant for Phil's career? Supposedly his brother, uh, Tim, who mm -hmm. is uh, the golf coach, at, or he, he was, was formerly the golf coach at Arizona State, is going to be his new caddy. Do you think that's that's going to affect him, not having uh, bones around anymore? I think it'll affect him, but he hadn't won a major since 2013. So I think he really... Time for the switch up. Yeah, time for the switch. Need and a new, was, new voice in his there ear. There was beef. So they acting I, I think, like it was I think they always have beef, though. I think you always have beef with your caddy. Yeah, I yeah, feel I mean, like that. Yeah, they, but, but I, there's a the thing. Is, but the thing is, life is life. You know, you people change. They grow older. They change. Yeah. You know, something. So after a while, you sick of that. And you know, they made a lot of money together. Yeah. So you know, I, if you, I don't. I, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a golf expert. But the way I see it is, if you a, after playing as long as he's played, and you switch caddies and you start losing. That seems crazy to me. Like I feel like his he has enough skill where the caddy is not going to be the reason why he loses. Caddies well, is very important. Cal yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and the, you have to trust them. The relationship that they that. had, you know, they would bounce stuff off of each other and almost kind of like mini argue on yep. the course to try and mm -hmm. figure out the right shot. Uh, but you know, certain uh, golfers thought that you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised by it. I mean, sometimes you do have to make that change. Um, that's but a long time. They, too. They, they they're basically family, lifetime. though, because I, I believe one of the wives introduced the other to the uh, the other's husband or something like that. I, I know that they're. That just sound like you was describing swingers, my dude. <laughs> Man, uh, <laughs> yo, not like that, <laughs> but like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Leave it to you guys. <laughs> See, I try to I try to stay with American Treasure. And uh, this shit here. <laughs> no, but yeah, they um, <laughs> they, they're very they're very close. To, I mean, they're, they're pretty much family, so. I think there has to be something when you've been together that long that w you want to make that sort of change. And they're both saying the right things in the media mm -hmm. about, the, oh, there's no issue and, you know, still everything's all good. We're still friends. And I also think caddies at that level, is a, got, it has to be a small community. So it's not, I, I'm pretty sure he has an eye on who he wants to be his caddy. They, they said he's probably going to go into commentating. Who? Uh, the caddy? Yeah. yeah. He said Why that's not? what he's had an eye on. Okay. They also hold a lot of secrets. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, in episode nine, we had a, 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 a very spirited discussion about golf in general, just why it isn't mainstream. Um, and I think the big takeaway was that it, you know, it's just really a hard game to master. We talk about, um, you art. know, the, the fact it is an art. The fact that, uh, you it's know, there have the been over, <laughs> there have been over a hundred different winners uh, of a golf major. And then when you look at the amount of golfers that have won two majors, that number drops to around 30. Um, and then you look at the state of golf today, as we talked about on the show on Tuesday, common knowledge, uh, Brooks, Kevin, last name? Kopka. Brooks Kopka is the seventh consecutive first time uh, major winner in a tournament. So there's been a streak. The last seven golf majors has been seven first-time winners. So there's a lot of parity in golf, specifically to golf. And I'll go around. Start with you, Kevin. Do you think that that is good or bad for the sport of golf? And does that make you more or less interested in the sport? I think it's good for golf now because it allows you know some unknown guys to like emerge to the forefront, kind of create those storylines. You learn more about those people. I mean, that's what carries sports, the, the personalities. But I think that ultimately, it's at some point, I think it, it will be important for us to get either a centralized figure or just someone that we can all either root for or root against. Because that's why I watch golf. Anytime Tiger was up there, it was not only because he – look black even though he won't claim it um <laughs> he him chasing jack's record that was something to watch something to root for 
a root against. So for now, I think it's good because we're learning about these people like Mr. Kopka, whose name we've never said as much as we said it on the show. But <laughs> I think as it, much as I think it's important. It. Yeah, now. really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's important for now. But at some point, we need to to have someone that we can that, that will elevate the game uh, themselves. I l- can't. He looked black more. in that uh, in that in that mugshot. I though. can't disagree <laughs> more. Omar, uh huh. I. I tried to think of this strictly from being a fan, regardless of the sport, just being a fan. And, you know, I like, I love football, I love basketball, I love baseball. And if I'm a fan, I love the fact that my team is always good. If I'm a Laker fan, I love that my team is great, has been great longer than most teams. I, if I'm a football fan, I love that my team is good. I hate when my team is bad or mediocre. I... People love dynasties. So you hate that shit now, right? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Walked in that door and yeah. buy my lonesome. <laughs> what he was sitting there looking at me. He was, started when you, with the Lakers. Yeah. <laughs> then you moved to the Bears. Yeah. He, pulled up in the, he pulled up in the white van yeah. with no windows. Yeah. It wasn't was getting any just better. Using for you. any team as an analogy, I got you. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so um, you're saying that parody? You you think parody is a bad thing? I didn't watch the. There, there's a reason why. Uh, the the um, the golf uh, ratings went down. People used to watch just to see if Tiger would lose. Also, like it was, yeah. <laughs> there was somebody people loved to either love. The same thing with Floyd. Everybody yeah. knew Floyd was gonna win. They wa- they they bought that that pay per view because they hoped he would lose. Yeah, it's it's you want somebody who's great enough to either love or great enough to hate. And right now they don't even have that. Less. I feel parity for a sport like golf or boxing is bad. Because you need that person like you had Tiger to root against Mm -hmm. or for people to follow. Like you said, he walked to the 18th hole. It's a crowd of people. You're watching it. Look, uh, what's the name about to make? How much money fighting Conor McGregor? Floyd. Floyd going to make how much? 200 million. million. So you need that type of personality in a sport like that. In tennis, you need a dominant character that people want to watch either win or lose. Um, In golf, I want to see somebody, what makes him so much better than everybody else? In this difficult ass sport. And it's difficult. It's difficult in that sport. And if you go to a team sport like basketball, you're kind of regional. So let's take Cleveland, Cleveland Browns. They're going to sell out their stadium. People are going to watch their games, even though they suck, because they grew up as Cleveland fans. They grew up as Browns. So you don't have that in a sport like boxing. You don't have that in a sport like um, uh, golf. You need that dominant character that brings in the crowd and is like, hey, who's going to beat him? Or why is he so good? What makes him better than the rest? I think in golf, I think parity is, is to his disadvantage. But I would like to see it where there were at least three dominant figures that could constantly go against each other, like in the golden era. Where rivalries. You had rivalries, like you had Jack Personalities, too. Right. Um, I mean, earlier when Tiger was doing his thing, you know, Vijay Singh had a little run. Mm-hmm. Mickelson was coming David on. David Duvall. Right there. Right. So, Sergio on a lesser right, level. Right, so you had that, but now it's just like so wide open. But in other team sports like football, basketball, baseball, I think we need parity. I mean... It was great this year. We knew the finals, what that was going to be. But do we want to see that for a fourth year right. or a fifth year? Mm-hmm. It need, it, I mean, the playoffs were absolutely horrible. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't bode well for the actual sport itself and those other sports, in my opinion. Well, I think that we did a good job, guys. A golf clap for us. <laughs> golf clap for us. There was really some good information put out there. I think that's a good place to land. Before we get out of here, uh, we've got to lightly touch on the NBA draft. Uh, we will talk about it in detail on our show uh, next week. But just real quick, going around, I'll start with you, Les. Uh, give me a team whose draft you really liked. Uh, I want to say the Lakers. <laughs> you That's your I wanna team. Say, nope. I want to nope. say, say the team. Lakers. You can't just but take all the, the teams. Sac- but Sacramento Kings had Damn. a great draft to me. Sacramento Kings, yeah. Devin. Ditto. Uh, I would say Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say Milwaukee, Dev? <laughs> uh, they trying to they trying to have everybody be the same. DJ Wilson, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody the same. Yeah. But no, Sacramento had a great draft out of nowhere. Kevin, 
Yeah, I agree. Sacramento, they got young talent. They can either develop or package the trade for, for other pieces. I yeah. Philly had a good Philadelphia draft. 76ers. I was going to say the Philadelphia 76ers. They got four forwards out there. They got a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Kale. side note, ESPN is struggling tonight. Okay, <laughs> whoever is in charge of the, <laughs> the teleprompter graphic, or the man. graphics has been blowing it the whole night. They need, but, to, uh, they need to see Rena. I like the 76ers. Uh, Jonah Bolden was a great pick. Um, as you know, obviously Markel Fultz is a perfect compliment to Ben Simmons. And then Jawan Evans, uh, another, another guard out of Oklahoma state, great in the pick and roll, which is in the NBA today. Uh, the 76ers are really building something. It's a shame. Sam Hinkie. He's what a sacrifice. Hey, <laughs> he Sam. died for us. Hinky died for Philadelphia <laughs> sins. Whoever made that shirt, kudos to you. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll get out of here on that note. We thank you for visiting confirmation bias. Uh, presented by the League Ambassadors. As a reminder, please follow us everywhere on social media at the League AM. Uh, visit our YouTube channel, League Ambassadors. Our website, theleagueam.com. Uh, leave comments. Give us feedback. Four! All right, and and we'll just we'll leave it right there. Thank you and good night. <laughs>